A new COVID variant has emerged, Omicron. And of course, the media is acting like everyone is freaking out and terrified. And perhaps that's true of big cities, but where I live and when I was just in Texas, doesn't seem to be a whole lot of fear around any of it. I mean, right now, as they're saying, this new variant is serious. Australia is putting in a two week lockdown in place and banning certain travel. And Joe Biden says he's going to be banning travel. A lot of people in the media are certainly acting like the apocalypse is coming. For me personally, you know, West Virginia and, the, and Western Maryland and Northern Virginia, Northern Virginia, I don't really see anybody freaking out over this. So maybe the real fear is just coming from the media. But many have pointed out that it's convenient a new variant is emerging, which may precipitate lockdowns as we enter midterm season. And the Republicans stand to achieve a red tsunami, meaning based on the things we've already seen with polling and with the last election, people believe Republicans are going to sweep. I don't know if that's true, and I don't like making predictions, because even when I made more facetious, exaggerated meme predictions, you know, it, it, people go nut, nuts with it and pull quotes out of context. So I'll just say this, I don't know who's going to win. I don't know if it'll be Republicans or Democrat, Democrats to, to gain power in November. I can say that I believe lockdowns greatly advantage Democrats due to universal mail-in voting, just naturally advantaging dense urban populations, which tend to be Democrat. But here's the real kicker. Now, we know what's going on in Australia. It's rather nightmarish as much as the propaganda machine is desperate to tell you that I'm wrong or that I'm making things up. I just use their standard corporate press and boy, are they freaking out that we are finding out and we're rather upset about their lockdowns and their relocations of the indigenous to quarantine camps 300 kilometers away. But here in the U.S., Joe Biden says lockdowns not needed to curb coronavirus variant. At least that's the headline here at the Hill. They bury the lead. It's interesting because that's not what Joe Biden said. You see, I like the Hill. They're not that bad. But if you only read the media, they're not giving you the full context. Joe Biden threatened a lockdown. He didn't say we didn't need one. He said, so long as you get your third vaccine, we won't need them for now. OK, that for now is a big indicator that he's not saying we don't need them. But you see how they do this. The headline is technically correct. What they're saying is, if everybody gets their third shot, then we won't have a lockdown. It's coercion and medical mandates. I strongly oppose across the board. The government doesn't have the right to mandate a medical procedure. And as such, a federal court has actually struck down more of the federal mandates for uh, Medicare and Medicaid. I'll, I'll pull that up specifically. But this is big. Already, the Fifth Cir Circuit Court has blocked Joe Biden's OSHA rule saying government can't mandate medical procedures like this. Now they're getting struck, uh, struck down by the courts more to the point where uh, I guess the Biden administration is actually saying federal workers don't have to be fired if they're unvaccinated for the holiday season, at least. And this is this was obvious. We knew it would happen. They're pushing back the deadlines because they know they don't have the legal authority to actually do it. They're just trying to scare people, coerce them into getting the vaccine. Now, as I always say, government shouldn't be involved in that. That's between you and your doctor. And I stress this point. We've had people on Timcast IRL who have gotten the vaccine and are fine. We've had people who have been on the show and don't have it and are fine. And we've had people who have been sick and not sick and we've been sick. That's why I'm just like, dude, anecdotally, we've been through it all and we've seen a lot of it. And, uh, you know, here at the Timcast uh, at, at, uh, at Cast Castle with all the projects we do. And I can only say we talked to our doctor and made sure that we got the appropriate treatment. We did testing when everyone was sick. Everyone's better now and everything's fine. And that was because it's, there's no one size fits all policy for, for medical mandates. But I will make a prediction. I don't like to, you know, because like, like I said, but I'll tell you this. I believe we will see lockdowns. <clears throat> Absolutely. Lockdowns greatly advantage Democrats. They have every reason to do it. And with news about this new variant, it seems extremely likely there will be some kind of lockdown. Now, in Europe, they're hard locking down already. Australia, gone completely nuts. Wait till you show, well, wait till you see all the Australia stuff. I've got, to, I've got to show you. That country is insane. These people are crackpots. But of course, I think this is all good reason to believe there will be more lockdowns. It's not unreasonable. Europe is doing it. Australia is doing it. Travel bans are coming in place. It's like a repeat of last year. Joe Biden's putting in new travel bans after criticizing Trump for the same thing. Exactly. Here we go again. 
Well, let's read the news and see what Joe Biden said. And then let me break down everything for you. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com and become a member to get access to exclusive members only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And we are launching a new pop culture show. That's right. Talking about movies and video games and all that stuff and a little bit of politics here and there. But for the most part, look, man, We're all big fans of movies and games. We got Hellbound on Netflix. Not a big fan of Netflix, to be honest, but we can talk about Squid Game, Mr. Beast and his thing. And we've got the new Spider-Man movie. So we're launching a new pop culture show to get into all that stuff and make sure that our values are expressed in the uh, the culture we produce and as we explain our ideas surrounding content and things like that. But also as a member, you're supporting our journalists and all of our different shows and and everything we're, we're working on. We've got Shane Cashman, Tales from the Inverted World. We have a new show on conspiracy theories that's going to be launching very soon. Two new shows coming up within like this next week because we are working hard and it's all thanks to you guys as members. So don't forget, like this video, subscribe to this channel, share this video right now, click the URL, share it, post it wherever you can. Let's read the news and talk about what's coming. From the Hill, Biden says lockdowns are not needed to curb coronavirus variant. Now I want to stress one of the tricks they do in media when they're desperately trying to cover something up. It's burying the lead. First, they don't include the context in the headline. And then the context is actually way down in the middle of the article. That way, if you do click it and you read the first couple of paragraphs, you miss the important context. The Hill reports President Biden said Monday that his administration was not recommending further restrictions on businesses or in-person gatherings to combat the coronavirus pandemic amid concerns about the new Omicron variant. Now, Joe Biden said something very similarly last year. No, we're not going to do lockdown, no vaccine mandates. And then what happened? Lockdowns and vaccine mandates. And boy, did the vaccine mandates go nuts. Apparently now, OSHA, uh, Biden's administration is saying they're looking at vaccine mandates for even small businesses with, with less than 100 employees. Of course, the, the Fifth Circuit Court said no to that, but we'll see what happens. Speaking from the Roosevelt Room, Biden described vaccinations as the best possible tool to defeat the virus and any emerging variants. He said his administration would outline a strategy to combat COVID-19 during the winter months later this week. Quote, on Thursday, I'll be putting forward a detailed strategy outlining how we're going to fight COVID this winter, not with shutdowns or lockdowns, but with more widespread vaccinations, boosters, testing and more. Biden later told reporters that lockdowns were off the table, quote, for now. His administration weighs measures to respond to the Omicron variant, much about which remains unknown. And here buried right in the middle of the article is, quote, if people are vaccinated and wear their mask, there is no need for the lockdown, Biden said. Okay, if people wear their mask and are vaccinated, there is no need for the lockdown. Do you think people are going to go out and get three shots? No, 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 no. hold on. Two shots, maybe. They came out and said the vaccine, one shot, then another shot. Now they're coming out and saying, actually, we were wrong. The Daily Beast says we screwed up. This really is a three dose vaccine. Global studies are showing that a third jab is not a booster. It's an essential element of the vaccination. And we shouldn't have given the first two doses so close together. All right, look, I'll be honest. I can respect science not getting it right. That's what science does. So science should be questioned. Otherwise, it's not science. If they come out and say, you look, this is rushed. Operation Warp Speed was under Trump. We were trying to get a handle on this. And here was our initial plan based on the data we had. And now we're like, maybe we should advise, re- revise this. I'm like, OK, I suppose. But that's neither here nor there, because ultimately it just comes down to you talking to your doctor. Seriously, some people like the former drummer of The Offspring, Pete Parada, Guillain Barre syndrome, he can't do it. And that's we, he shouldn't be discriminated against or uh, because he can't. It's not fair. He's tried, you know, he, he, this is, this, uh, he acts in good faith. And maybe you went to your doctor and for different reasons, you were told yes or no. This is about the lockdowns and the politics of it all, not but what you and your doctor want to do. Let me show you this tweet here. At BOS Loves Jesus tweets, Michigan fans sending a clear message to Dr. Fauci and the experts at The Who. And there you go. Packed into a stadium, shoulder to shoulder and rushing the field all crammed together. All right. If this is what we're going to see, do you think there's going to be a lockdown? Let's throw it back to Mr. Joe Biden. If people are vaccinated and wear their masks, there is no need for the lockdown. I just showed you that that screen. I just showed a screenshot for those that are only listening of probably tens of thousands of people all shoulder to shoulder rushing the field. Um, 
doesn't seem like they're masked and doesn't seem like many of these people have their booster shots because boosters are new. Now, many, many may get their booster shots. I'm willing to bet many won't. I'm willing to bet many of these people won't get their booster shots because, well, people have, are fed up. I mean, look at what Bill Maher said. Bill Maher on his show said, I, I got the vaccine. I took it one for the team. And now you're telling me we got to get more. And I'm not going to do it. That's what Bill Maher said. Well, that's him personally. He's allowed to have his opinion on what his decision is. But, you know, certainly I think it's between you and your medical practitioner, as I often say. But people are going to say no. They're going to say no to this. In fact, the courts are going to say no to this. Patrick Morris, he says a federal judge in Missouri has issued a preliminary injunction against the CMS vaccine mandate for 10 states. While this is good news, the injunction does not yet cover West Virginia and our coalition of states. We are awaiting word back from a Louisiana judge about our coalition. Patrick Morris, he is a conservative Uh, I believe, West Virginia Attorney General, West Virginia AG. Now, this is still good, but think about what this means. Sure, Joe Biden might not be able to actually force people to get vaccinated because the courts are striking him down. But then he can come out and say, you know, you you got these courts, man. They're saying we can't have vaccine mandates that save lives. So we're going to have to issue these lockdowns. Otherwise, people will will die. And Joe Biden doesn't necessarily have that power. But you know, all these blue states are going to do it. You take a look at Florida and the southern states' COVID cases, and it's low. So I'll tell you this. If you don't want to live under the boot, maybe that's where you should go. But let's take a look at Biden's own policies. I'm telling you, it's, I believe there will be a lockdown, a hard lockdown, a serious one from the week. Originally, the title was Republicans Pounce. I love how they do that on, uh, on you know, Joe Biden. But they changed it to Conservatives Cry Hypocrisy after Biden bans travel from eight African countries. They say during the 2020 campaign, critics noted Biden accused former President Donald Trump of racism and xenophobia for enacting similar similar travel bans. Joe Biden tweeted back in 2020, Trump further diminished the U.S. in the eyes of the world by expanding his travel ban. This new African ban is designed to make it harder for black and brown people to immigrate to to, to the United States. It's a disgrace and we cannot let him succeed. That's interesting. Uh, Joe Biden's doing the same thing. Biden says he delayed Africa travel ban over Omicron variant on advice of advisors led by Fauci. And this one will be interesting, but let me read because you may be saying, wait, 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 hold on. I thought you were saying it was it was hypocrisy. Is he actually having the travel ban? Well, let's take a look. President Biden said on Friday he delayed implementation of a new ban on travel from South Africa, Southern Africa, on the advice of his medical advisors who are led by Fauci. A reporter asked Biden why the emergency precaution will take effect Monday rather than immediately to contain the potentially more contagious Omicron version. Why not do it now like other countries have done? The, uh, why, why not do it now like other countries have done? The journalist asked Biden. Biden said, because that was the recommendation coming from my medical team. Fauci is Biden's chief medical advisor. We don't know a lot about the variant, except that it's, it is of great concern and seems to spread rapidly. And I spent about half an hour this morning with my COVID team led by Dr. Fauci, and that was the decision we made. OK, so Joe Biden, uh, the, the Biden administration announced they were going to have this ban. But Fauci said, mm, maybe don't do it. All right, this should get interesting. During the Trump years, Donald, uh, when, when COVID was, it was emerging, Trump wanted a travel ban. Fauci said no. Trump said, I believe it was Peter Navarro. We interviewed him. I believe he was the one who said that he told Trump, you have to do this. And Trump agreed with him. And Fauci knew the whole time what was going on. And we now know this thanks to the leaked emails from Fauci. But I'll point out, it is hypocritical for Joe Biden to announce a travel ban from from Southern Africa and then, you know, have criticized and have had criticized Trump over the same thing as racism. Okay, fine. Joe Biden's racist. He's also now bowing down to Fauci, who was wrong before, because we know that Trump's travel ban helped slow the spread. Take a look at this from TimCast.com. This is interesting. We hosted Peter Navarro, senior White House official under the Trump administration. He claimed, or he stated, and I believe this is fair to say that we've backed, this is all backed up. Fauci and China are responsible for pandemic and $20 trillion GDP loss. Fauci knew, Navarro told Timcast, if he had simply told us, we would have cracked down on China. This was during our members only podcast. This is a former White House official, a senior official under the Trump administration. And what he had stated was so important. We put out the clips and made an article about it at Timcast.com. Navarro, promoting his new book in Trump time, had been discussing a lot about what was going on. He was asked by Luke Rutkowski on the show what was happening in those initial days. Quote, the boss is at the top of his game, Navarro recalled. Everybody thinks he's a lock for re-election. There's exuberance about a trade deal. But I'm sitting in the audience in a cold sweat. 
Navarro was talking about his book. We get it. I'm wondering as I look up at the stage, what do these Chinese communists know that they're not telling us? Could they be infected? And if so, why are they sitting so close to the president? And by the way, why did they shake my hand at the trade dinner last night? But most importantly, I was thinking to myself, could this be a bioweapon that was designed to intentionally take out only the president, who would have, the only president who would ever step to the CCP? And I don't know about all that. That seems a little bit too much for me. Lab leak, potentially, yes. I think uh, uh, leaking from a lab makes a lot of sense. Whether this was the virus developed by Fauci's funded gain of function research, we don't know. We're missing a few of the puzzle pieces. But even John Stewart said probably leaked from a lab somewhere or another. We have all of the pieces lining up. But the one in the middle is missing. And I think a reasonable, reasonable person at this, at this point makes the assumption lab leak tends to make the most sense. What was most interesting, he says, the, most import, the important thing to understand here is what Fauci knew and didn't tell us. Everybody in the room knew the virus came from Wuhan. Everybody in the room knew that it had popped up near the Wuhan lab. But what none of us knew then was that Fauci had funded that lab with taxpayer money. And worse, he engaged in a cover up to make sure that we got off his scent. This is important because if he had simply told the president, hey, look, I've got some bad news for you. I think this is probably from the lab, maybe a weapon. It's certainly genetically engineered. You know what the difference would have been? We would have cracked down on China and we would have gotten the original genome of the virus. You know what that would have allowed us to do is allowed us to craft a true vaccine. It's a lie of omission. He should be in jail and out of government. Now, let me clear a few things up. What he means by true vaccine is an attenuated virus vaccine, which is the old school version where you get the genome and then you can actually take weakened versions of the virus. Without that, what he's basically saying is that we ended up with mRNA vaccines. Now, in my opinion, I think I say this all the time. mRNA is, is a brilliant technology, but it's not the same as attenuated virus. Now, I don't know. I mean, the virus is all over the place. I'm certainly they could make it if they wanted to. And I think I think it's called Novavax. I'm not sure there is going to be a, a an old, like a more traditional vaccine as opposed to the new mRNA stuff. I don't completely agree with with Peter Navarro's view on everything. The point he's saying is, if Fauci came out and said we did fund this kind of, you know, SARS uh, chimeric research in this lab, then the Trump administration would have acted as such it was and been much more serious and cracked down on China. The most important thing here is not about whether we can definitively prove that it leaked from a lab. I think it's a reasonable hypothesis for most people, but we are still missing that one little piece. Again, I think the circumstantial evidence is pretty intense in that regard. But I'm trying to make sure I'm very precise here because the point is that Fauci knew about the funding and it should come up. Whether it actually was a lab leak or not, Fauci in that room with Navarro, with the president, with everyone should have said, you, you realize we've been funding this kind of thing in Wuhan and it's something we should be looking into. He didn't. He apparently told them, no travel ban, don't worry about it, and just kept it hush hush. In the leaked emails, apparently he emailed someone uh, involved and said, could this be one of ours? So yeah, I think Fauci is dishonest and a bad actor. But let's take a look. Let's take a look at where we're going, where we're going here. The White House is telling federal agencies they can hold off on suspending or firing federal workers for not complying with the vaccine mandate until after the holidays, according to a memo obtained by ABC News. Um, why? If we're in a pandemic emergency that's been going on for nearly two years, two years, isn't that crazy? Shouldn't they be like, there is no reason why we would not take this seriously? Why are they saying, oh, it's a mandate because we have to have it or people will die, but uh, hey, you can chill for Christmas. Doesn't sound like they're all that worried. Doesn't seem like an emergency. Now, maybe they're saying we need federal staff through the holidays. It's a very serious time and we can't afford to lose them. But then that would imply that's what, January 2nd? They're like, OK, now we'll be understaffed. No, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. It sounds mostly like coercion. It sounds mostly like what they're doing is pushing back the deadlines over and over again because they know they'll lose in the courts, but they need an excuse to try and force you to get it of your own choice to manipulation. They're saying, here's the deadline. You better go get your vaccine. And then people say, I better do it now. And they do. And they go, oh, never mind. We removed it. Oh, you're already vaccinated? Well, you know, you're fine then. Everyone else is fine too. And as I've already showed, Pfizer has said, we screwed up. It really is a three dose vaccine. But let's talk about the politics of where we go as a nation, as a country, as a world. When you have politicians lying, when you have politicians willing to exploit crises like these for power, for political gain, and when you have people unwilling to stand up. Let's, uh, let's get into this. Here you go. 
Republican detractors are criticizing science, says Fauci. Again, he said it last time. Let me see. Okay, well, I'm not going to uh, do this survey for Forbes. Something will pop up. Here they say. Uh, it's on the website. Some stupid thing popped up. Dr. Fauci on GOP criticism. Attacks on me, quite frankly, are attacks on science. He said that more than once. This guy is a lunatic. But there he is advising Joe Biden. Fantastic. Let me show you how people are talking about Australia. Let's talk about where we could go if we don't stand up. If you Google search the story about Australia, the Atlantic wrote, is pandemic Australia still a liberal democracy? Hmm. What's it called? Bedford's Law or something like that? Any headline that asks a question can be answered simply by no. Okay. So when they say, is pandemic, pandemic Australia still a liberal democracy? You can say no. Isn't it funny how that works? I think it's called Bedford's Law or Benford's Law or something like that. Maybe it's not. Maybe I'm mixing something up. I don't know. L- look it up. It's, a, it's, it's that law of titles or something like that. It's been a while since I read about it, but there you go. Well, the Atlantic changed the headline. Australia traded away too much liberty. How long can a democracy maintain emergency restrictions and still call itself a free country? I hope you're ready for this one, my friends. Let's dive deep into the psychotic authoritarianism and propagandistic manipulation that is Australia. Here we go. First, we have this tweet from Josh Zepps. This is one I've showed before, but we're going to get into it. ABC broadcaster. I believe that's Australia, not uh, uh, ABC America. He goes on to say Australia's lockdowns having a viral moment in the US. This is in September, mind you. This thread provides essential context for American followers and interested Aussies. Please retweet. Uh, retweet at di- and direct curious Americans back here to his crackpot propaganda. No, I think it's great that people read this stuff for sure. Don't let anybody uh, tell you not to consume information. But this guy is full of it. He says, let's agree that Australia's outbound travel ban is crazy and possibly unconstitutional. Unless I exude magical COVID curing pixie dust, there's no public health harm in leaving the country. OK, yeah, that's right. You can't leave the country. That's crazy. I think you have to be vaccinated to leave. Similarly, imposing draconian inbound caps with no orderly way to return to Australia was a betrayal of what it means to be a citizen. Abandoning Aussies in India was even worse. Your birthright can't be at the whim of an airline revenue manager in Doha. Here's the game he's playing. This one's great. He's guiding you in, presuming he's reasonable. Let's go. Police have sometimes been strict strict in enforcing the lockdowns, harassing influencers who post photos on a bench or jailing protesters is illiberal. There's a problem with policing more broadly. America is hardly a nation untouched by police overreach. I'm going to stop right there and say, duh, I agree. How about that? I've called for complete prison overhaul. I think our prison system is broken and should be abolished, not just releasing every prisoner's not getting rid of our legal system. It's the carceral system, as I, I, I believe. And I agree with AOC in calling it insane. It's not fixing anything. It's not rehabilitating people. It's just shuffling them under the rug. So we need a different kind of facility that can hold violent criminals, but actually seek to help them. And if you can't, we lock them up for life. No joke, like ch- child predators and things like that. I think we need violent offenders to be locked up way longer and nonviolent offenders to be like, mostly let go. I say mostly because some people, you know, pleaded down and they're still violent offenders. But, you know, let's 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 move on. Here's my favorite, my favorite, favorite, favorite. He says repurposing outback mining accommodation into international arrival bungalows is not the same as running a concentration camp. Concentration camps are bad because they brutalize political prisoners, not because they look ugly in aerial photos. And it's a tweet from me where uh, someone, Bernie's tweet said, this isn't China. This is the Howard Springs quarantine camp in Australia for the dangerous people. And I put asterisk concentration camp. The early and simple definition of a concentration camp was a camp in which a group of people were concentrated for some reason or another. It became synonymous with death camp because of what happened in World War II. So naturally using that phrase evokes a certain kind of emotion and is in a sense intended to be fairly hyperbolic. I get it. I think intelligent people get my point as well. I'm kind of just pushing, like poking people being like, this is how it begins. Someone posted a horrifying photo. It was Jewish people um, outside of one of the one of the concentration camps with many smiling in a photograph. 
And it's because a lot of people did not know what this would turn into. In Australia, it started as when you arrive in the country, we need you to quarantine. Hotels are not appropriate for this. So we've created a camp. It's a camp where you will be forced to go. You can't leave and you will be under armed guard. After two weeks, you're free to leave. Now, they're saying it's an international rival bungalow. The point I made here in greater context was it's only a matter of time before they show up to someone's house and say, you are COVID positive and have to come to the camp. It's only a matter of time before they say your protest against the camps and the lockdown was a super spreader event. And because you're all now suspected of having COVID, you need to come to that camp. I was told by Quillette and Claire Lehman and people like this guy that I was crazy and wrong. And look at this. Oh, geez. Look how absurd these people are. Now we're here. This is the uh, minister of the North. Uh, was it the Northwest Territories or Northeast Territories? Sorry, Northeast. He said, we're grateful for the support of about 20 ADF personnel, as well as many, as well as uh, army trucks to assist with the transfer of positive cases and close contacts. Wake up world. And I said, the people at Quillette are either idiots or they're a-holes. I was criticized for saying exactly this would happen by the cowards. When Claire Lehman of Quillette, who's an absolute propagandist for the state of Australia, started criticizing me, saying it was being, it was, I was a blowhard. And because I said, at some point they'll come for Australians and just bring them to this place. It's not an international arrival bungalow. I said, I was crazy. Then it actually happened. And what do we get? Claire Lehman responded. They're transferring people from remote indigenous communities who live hundreds of kilometers from any hospital. You clearly know nothing about Australia, so I suggest you stop tweeting about us like an ignorant blowhard. Oh, Claire, you pathetic, spineless coward. Or, I mean, maybe, she, maybe coward's the wrong word. Maybe she's just an, a propaganda for the state, in which case she's very brave. Standing up for the state, standing strong in the face of overwhelming evidence of the growing authoritarianism of Australia. Yes. So we actually have a statement from the minister that more than one thing has happened. They've taken away the rights of individuals to leave their homes. Let me see uh, if I can um, pull up the, the right story here. I believe maybe it is. Here we go. NT communities of Binjari and Rockhole placed into hard lockdown over COVID cases. Let's start with this premise. He says, yes, there are strong me uh, measures, but the threat to lives is extreme. Under the hard lockdown, residents can only leave their home for five under under the old lockdown. Sorry, residents could only leave their home for five reasons. Essential shopping, essential work, providing or receiving care, exercise and obtaining medical treatment. Now, that is a psychotic government decree. When this happened in the United States and we had the hard lockdowns, we call it a hard lockdown when they said stay at home unless you need to leave. Yeah, you can go outside, exercise, go to the parks, do all that stuff. Some parks will be closed, but you can go out. We're just saying it's a, it's a, it's a guideline. Listen to this. Gunner has announced Binjari and Rockhole residents now cannot leave their homes unless for medical reasons or an emergency. That is to say, if you are in Binjari or Rockhole, if you are indigenous in this area, you can't buy food. And here's how the game is played. When Claire Lehman easily admitted they are transporting people, and we have this story from abc.net.au. Remember that guy, Josh Epps, who was like, oh, he's being hyperbolic, reporter for ABC. We have this story, which I've shown you before, that says, oh, wait, I'm sorry. This is, the, is this the one about the man escaping? Oh, I'm sorry. This is the story about the person trying to escape from the quarantine. Here we go. Here we go. Here's the story I was looking for. Where they say, let me, let me, let me uh, grab that number here. They said uh, 38 people. Okay, let me just search for 38. Authorities had identified 38 close contacts in Binjari, a number he said would likely rise, who were transported to Howard Springs on Sunday. So is this Claire Lehman saying they live hundreds of kilometers from any hospital? Now, many people have pointed out that's not true. There's a local hospital. And then people like Claire Lehman said, oh, it's hardly a hospital. They don't have anything to help anybody. They got to go to the quarantine facility hundreds of kilometers away. 38 people were transported by the ADF. That's literally what was reported. I mean, I don't know what you want me to say. 
when dude comes out and says ADF personnel assisting with a transfer of close contacts. That's quite literally the Australian Defense Force pulling up and saying, hop in, we're taking you to a quarantine facility. Now, here's the point. In response to my tweet uh, at Claire Lehman, a ton of people started saying, but is it voluntary? Is it voluntary? And all of these Australian propagandists were like, what Tim Pool fails to mention is that, you know, the, the people need this help. The funny thing is, when everyone asked if it was a voluntary transport to the quarantine facility, what people failed to realize is the politics and the enforcement behind what it means to be forced or coerced. I think it's a detraction. It, it, it distracts. If the government says to you, you cannot leave your home even for food, and you're sitting in your home without food and you're hungry, and you go outside and they say, get back in your house because the ADF, the military has been deployed. And you're like, I need food. And say, well, look, you can't leave your house. I'll tell you what, if you'd so desire, you can hop in our truck and we'll bring you to a quarantine facility where we'll give you food in the morning. Is that voluntary? So maybe it's not that they're showing up with guns saying, get in the truck, if that's what you'd expect. But they're saying you can't leave your house for food. If your only option then is to get into the military transport with the ADF to go to a quarantine facility where people are trying to escape. Look at this one. Police find Victorian woman who escaped Howard Springs. That's what's happening in Australia. How about that? I love this one. Claire Lehman, she tweets, LOL, just discovered that there's a Howard Springs hashtag on Instagram, and it's full of hot babes posing at what Tim Cast calls a concentration camp. <laughs> and uh, lo and behold, there are some hot babes sunbathing and sitting there with their masks on in a quarantine camp. How absolutely insane. Now, many people have pointed out that this appears to be uh, Olympians. The Olympians, when they were turning, were put in these quarantine camps. I believe it was Jack Murphy who pointed out how strange. If you search the hashtag about hot babes on Instagram, you, uh, 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 well, when you search the Howard Springs um, hashtag, you, you don't see any regular people. It's just a bunch of hot babes and smiling faces. How psychotic and deranged is that? How creepy is that? Here's a photo of the people happily being taken to the government camp. Nothing can ever go wrong. The indigenous people we're bringing here, well, they weren't allowed to leave their homes to get food, but they chose to come because it was better. Or maybe they didn't choose, but we're helping them. A video went viral showing indigenous leaders calling for international help. And they sound a little off, their, off the plot, to be completely honest, a little conspiratorial. But there's videos of indigenous people in Australia being thrown into police wagons, screaming and fighting, claims that Tribal leaders are saying they're experimenting on us and forcing vaccinations and forcing people into the camps. So when they say, what's your evidence? It's done by force. I'll say uh, the minister of NT saying you can't leave your house to eat. That's it. It's remarkable. So now I have these people like Jesse Singley, he's a journalist. He was like, Tim Pool should delete all his tweets. Why? What have I said? I tweeted out the Guardian, dude. Maybe Jesse Singley should actually read the news. No, he's, he, this guy's not all bad. He's, he's done some good work in the past. But how absurd is it when obviously I'm being hyperbolic by saying concentration camp? It's about what could happen, not what is. And I said months ago, how long until they go to Australians and take them in Australia to these camps, either with force or through coercion? And I didn't even really get into that detail. I said, look, in, in, in World War II, they didn't show up and say, everyone hop in the death car. They said, everyone's got to get in. It's for your own safety. And everyone just did what they were told. That's why we can't allow that. The government shouldn't have the right to round people up and bring them to camps. Now, look, if there's like a, 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 an apocalyptic event that's very obvious and people want to choose to go to these things, I get it. And maybe that's just it. People just blindly believe whatever the government tells them. So the government can whisper in their whisper in their ear that the aliens have invaded. Come to this facility. You'll love it. And then they do. We've long known. Don't get in the train car because we know where it leads. Maybe not now, but at some point, at some point. Why should I trust them? Why would you blindly just believe the government when they're doing things like this? Here's the important point. Before they were taking these indigenous people to the camps, Australians 
in Australia. I was told they were international arrival bungalows. That's what Josh Zepp said. International arrival bungalows. Josh, I have a question for you. Why would you need to take indigenous people who are the least international arrival, least to, likely to like the least uh, uh, literally international, like they were indigenous. You guys came uh, 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 during the colon- uh, colonial period. They're being taken to your international arrival bungalows. So um, you're just wrong. You're agents of the state. You have dropped to your knees to serve the ridiculous authoritarianism. And everybody in the U.S. can see it for the most part. I cannot believe that there are people still supporting Quillette in the U.S. I'm sure there were many back when Quillette was libertarian. But now they're just telling you, shut up and let the government lock. Let's 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 believe for one second. Let's let's say for one second that they're not forcing people in any way to the camps. The minister came out and said, you can't leave your home to eat. To eat. Okay. That's what's happening. Sure. Not authoritarianism. And that's what Claire Lehman is, is supporting. The government saying no food for you. It's, it's, it's nightmarish. So take a look at what's happening in the US. Joe Biden's probably going to come up with a lockdown excuse. We shouldn't tolerate it. Fortunately, we have the state system and some states are doing better than others. But I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up tonight at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastirl, where we'll dive into this stuff in more in-depth live show. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all then.